Ahoj, this is Denka. If you are thinking about buying smartphone lenses, there are a few things you need to know. First of all, you don't want to make the wrong purchase. And once you make the purchase, you want to know how to use them to get the most out of them. As new smartphones are getting bigger sensors, companies are coming out with lenses for smartphone these days. There are so many out there, from cheap to expensive, from light lenses to heavy lenses. So what to choose? I would curse out the cheap lenses you see on Amazon. The quality is not there. Sometimes you get this weird tint over them or the vignette. Most of them are not built for the bigger sensor on the latest smartphones. I have Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and iPhone 14 Pro. I will be getting 15 Pro soon. I'm not going with the 15 Pro Max because I don't need the extra zoom. It's pretty much the same thing as the 15 Pro and the price difference is just too big. The three companies I showcased on my channel are Moment, Shiftcam, and now Freewell. Moment has very small, lightweight lenses, which are good for travel. However, I don't have the new set yet, which is built for a bigger sensor. Shiftcam has bigger lenses, and those lenses are a bit heavier. Freewell just launched their Sherpa series lenses, which are meant for professional use. And that is what I use. I also have all their filters for my bigger Sony camera. Now, these lenses are a little bit heavier. The reason behind the weight is exceptional quality. Before you buy any lens, you need to look at the rest of your setup. Do you film handheld or with a gimbal? If you go with heavier lens, is your gimbal strong enough to handle it? Let's talk about ND filters for those lenses as those filters can really change the look of your videos. Two months ago, I posted a tutorial on how to create this Hollywood look with a smartphone. This 1.33 times anamorphic lens with those ND filters were the main part of it. This set is part of the Freewell Sherpa series. The lens itself is important, but also the quality of the ND filter you will put on it. If you use the universal VND filter, and I'm talking about one to eight stop, then there is a very good chance you will end up with a cross hatch pattern. This is how it looks like. Better option is using two VND filters with less stops. One is lighter, and the other one is darker. The best option though, is to use ND filters, which you don't turn. Those are separate, like this, just a single one shade ND filters, but here comes the catch. So it can get pretty expensive if you're gonna buy them separately. So you need to look for bundles, sets, where you can have multiple filters in one kit. You also have a guarantee that it all works together. Freewell would be one of them. It has ND filters, CPL filter, and mist filter. Let's answer a big question. What lens should you buy next? And I get this question on a weekly basis from a few people. And my answer is, it will really depend on what you film and what look you want to achieve. In one of the recent videos where I was teaching how to film this cinematic video where cartoon comes alive, I was filming with this 1.33 times gold streak cinemorphic lens, an ND filter. I wanted to get the wide look with true colors, and this combo certainly gives it. I wanted to create a very summary color grade in the post later on. You don't necessarily have to use this lens only at night to see the streaks, but if you want to see the gold streaks, here is some footage you can check out. You can film with or without ND filter.
You can add mist filter for dreamy look. There is also 1.55 times cinemorphic lens if you like even a wider look. The black bars at the top and the bottom will be bigger. If you need something between standard lens and ultra wide angle lens, then wide angle lens would be a good choice because you're not going to get any distortions. Now, do you want to see what look you're going to get with it if you're going to be using iPhone 14 Pro and Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra? Here is standard lens on iPhone. Here is wide lens mounted over the standard lens. And here is ultra wide angle lens. Let's look at the footage from S23 Ultra. Here is standard lens. Here is wide angle lens mounted over standard lens. Let me know in a comment section below. Now, what picture quality do you prefer? Do you like the iPhone 14 Pro or do you like the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra? One of them is a little bit more colorful. The other one is a little bit more natural. I would like to know what majority thinks and what you guys prefer. Moving on, let's just add a mist filter over the lens to see what kind of soft look you are going to get. Here is the iPhone. And here is the S23 Ultra. Two more looks I'm going to show you. The first clip I'm going to show you was shot with this long range macro lens. You don't need to get too close to the subject. You get a beautiful blur in the background. Here are some examples with iPhone. And here is Samsung. Last one is fish eye look completely different once again. Here are samples from the iPhone and here is Samsung. By the way, I linked all the Sherpa series lenses below the video in case you are wondering. Looking at those two phones I have here, do you actually know your phone inside out when it comes to cameras? and settings. When you're going to add, for example, a long range macro, suddenly you might be getting frustrated that you are having issues because you don't have iPhone's macro control enabled in the settings and camera screen macro is off. Before you get any lenses, get to know your cameras inside out. By the way, I have tutorials for both of these smartphones, I'm going to link them below and more is coming up. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Let's answer another common question. What is the best app to use with all those lenses? Well, for filming with a wide angle lens, fish eye lens, macro lens and long range macro, you can just use your native camera app. If you will be filming with anamorphic or cinemorphic lenses, it's the same thing, just two different names. Or telephoto lenses, you will need a third party app. Those apps will allow you to disqueeze the footage. Telephoto lenses also need to be used with third party apps. iPhone goes first. iPhone doesn't have manual controls in its native camera app. So I would go with the newly released Blackmagic camera app, which is completely free, or Filmic Pro. I also like Proteic app, which also has the portrait camera mode. And now Android phones. The S23 Ultra has pro video manual controls. It has a pro video mode in native camera app. So I would most likely use that. But if you want to film with anamorphic lens, you can use MC Pro 24 FPS, Proteic app or Filmic Pro. Give it a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and don't forget to check out one of these videos next. See you in the next one. Ciao. Ahoy.